Hello and welcome to my video all about how to knit with scales. This is a fun technique I came across and I just wanted to show you in a brief demo. I've seen this technique used to make parts of costumes, for instance for dragons or mermaids, or even used to make necklaces or gauntlets. And I just think it looks really, really effective. What you will need is some scales. And you can find these on certain jewellery websites online and mine are made from aluminium. This makes them lightweight, however they are metal so if you're using a lot of them in a project, that project might end up very heavy. So just be aware of that and maybe try and space the scales out a bit if you want it to be lighter overall. They measure just over 2 centimeters long. And the hole in the scales measures about five and a half millimetres across. I'm going to be using double knit yarn today, which I suggest is the thickest weight of yarn you should use with scales. And I'm also going to use 4.5 millimetre diameter needles. That's the biggest diameter of needle I would use with these scales because the holes in the scales are only five and a half millimetres across. The thinner the needles you use, the easier it's going to be for you because it just gives you a bit more wiggle room when you're trying to get the yarn through the holes in the scales. Scales are nearly always added to stockinette stitch. If you use garter stitch, you can only add the scales every other row or you have to add the scales on both sides of your knitting. I'm just doing a brief demo so I've only got about 10 stitches on my needles. Okay, so here you can see I've already added a couple of scales and you can see that each scale is attached to the knitting with two pieces of yarn. So what you do is you go into the top stitch with your right hand needle exactly as you would with a normal knit stitch. You then take one of the scales and make sure that the back of it, which is slightly concave, is facing you and the front of the scale, which is convex, is facing away from you. On the knit rows of stockinette stitch, the scales are always added to the side of the knitting that's away from you. You then feed this scale onto the tip of the right hand needle. You then wrap the working yarn around the right hand needle as usual. And then the next step is to hook that yarn loop back through that hole in the scale. Apart from the step of taking the yarn back through the scale, it's exactly the same as a normal knit stitch. However, this step can be a little bit fiddly, especially if you're using large needles. So what you do is just try and manipulate that loop of yarn down through that hole in the scale. Once you've done that, you can basically just complete the knit stitch. And then you push that stitch off the needle as usual. You always have to do a normal stitch in between each scale. So now we just do a regular knit stitch. And that adds the additional support on the other side of the scale. If we didn't do a normal stitch between the scales, each scale would only be held on by one piece of yarn and that wouldn't make them very secure or stable. For the last stitch, I'm just going to do a normal knit stitch because you can't add a scale on the very last stitch or the very first stitch of any row. Because we're knitting stockinette stitch, the next row is the purl row. I'm just going to do purl stitches for this entire row. It is possible to add scales on the purl row and I'll do a very quick demo later in the video on how to do that. However, I like to space the rows of scales out a little bit. Otherwise, they can look a bit too bunched up and also the weight of the knitting would double if you added scales to both the knit rows and the purl rows. And then we're on to the next knit row. This time I'm going to knit a couple of stitches first before I add the first scale because I want to add two scales this time rather than three and I want them to be positioned more in the centre of the row. You'll see the effect of this a little bit later. Okay, so again I go into the top stitch, feed a scale onto the right hand needle with the front facing away from me. 
Now wrap the working yarn around the needle and then wiggle that yarn through the hole in the scale. And then complete the knit stitch. And then I do a normal knit stitch. And then I add another scale before knitting to the end. Now you can see the effect of having two scales towards the centre of the knitting. And I think this just looks a lot better than if they are completely aligned with the previous scales. And I then do one more row of purl stitches. Of course, how you line up the scales is completely up to you. And it's also up to you how far apart you spread out the scales. It completely depends on the look you're going for and how lightweight you want your knitted project to be at the end. I then repeat all of that again. And then I do another row of purl stitches. On the last stitch I'm going to show you A what happens when you add a scale on the very last stitch and B how to add a scale on a purl row. So you simply go into the top stitch with your right hand needle as if to purl. Then feed a scale onto the right hand needle tip with the front of the scale facing you. This is because on any purl row the scales will be added to the side of the knitting that's nearest you. So on a knit row scales are added to the side away from you and on a purl row the scales are added to the side facing you. You then wrap the working yarn and then hook that loop of yarn with your needle, taking it back through the hole in the scale and then completing the purl stitch as usual. So it's just the reverse of the technique you use when you add scales to knit stitches. And as you can see by adding the scale at the end of a row it's not very stable or secure. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I also hope it's inspired you to try this technique out and use it for all sorts of creative knitting projects. Thank you very much for watching.